How's it going guys? Toasty Bros here and we are here with the 2016 Toaster PC build. Roll the intro. Alright, so as Matt said, this is our 2016 toaster oven PC build. So, this is gonna be something completely custom, and that's what we're all about. So, we got a lot of cool hardware here a lot of hard drives, um, really good CPU power. Pretty much everything's gonna be really powerful, and it's gonna be really cool, completely custom. So, we're gonna go ahead and kind of show you guys everything we're gonna be using for this build. Okay, so starting off, this is gonna be like our computer case. This is a toaster oven. So if you don't know what a toaster oven is, you know, go and Google it. It's just a, you know, it's to cook toast. And we are the Toasty Bros. People have been asking for this, so it's a toaster oven. And it has, I think it has two racks on it. We actually, uh, in the previous thing in the video, you guys will have seen the toaster oven, what it looked like. But this one's going to be a brand spanking new one. So we'll unbox that soon to show it to you guys. Next, we're going to go ahead and show you guys the CPU cooler and the CPU. So the CPU is a quad core. It's an AMD Athlon 2 series, and it's running at about 2. Point, what is it, like 2.8 gigahertz or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's quad core though, and that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's a step up for us. And then the CPU cooler is actually a AM3 Plus. It's for an 8350, so it has the nice heat pipes on it, and it looks really cool. You know, copper heat pipes and all that. And then Arctic 5 silver compound to actually thermal paste. Yeah, yeah, that, that made sense. Um, and then these are kind of like our peripheral type things. We have, this is a uh, temperature display, it's an LED one, and it's really cool, and I had it in a previous build, and we're going to see if it actually works, because we're not too sure. And then we have, um, this will be our power button, it's actually a reset button, but we can use it as a power because it only has two pins on it. And a couple other things we might use with the LEDs. Then going over to the motherboard, this is a gigabit motherboard. The actual model name is, oh, you guys see it. Yeah, see, we actually, this is brand new, it's really nice. It's a micro ATX board, so it's pretty small. And you can see we have RAM here. It is, what was this? It's Corsair. I forgot about that. It's actually Corsair, but it's only 1333 uh, megahertz speed. We're going to put more RAM in this for sure, though, because we're going to be doing some really cool things with it. We're going to need a lot of RAM. Um, but it's still a nice looking stick. We'll probably try to find some matching sticks. This GPU is a... 5670. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty... See, I didn't even remember what it was. I'll go ahead and unbox it for you guys, though, because we not. We really don't even need a GPU for this, but... We figured why not. It's pretty low profile, so. Um, and Matt said it works fairly well. He said it was you know, not too bad for gaming. So yeah. plus with the quad core, I mean, can't beat that. It'd be pretty nice. We have a lot of fans here. We're not sure how many we're gonna actually use. These are all just 90 millimeter fans. One of them I modified to just use a normal four pin, but it's actually only using two. And then the other ones are just um, Molex connectors. And then our hard drive space. This is where it kind of gets fun for us. So we got a boot drive. This is a 120 gig SSD. We just pulled that out of the mineral oil, as you guys saw. And we got it mostly clean. I mean, you can see it's pretty dry, but it is still kind of drip cooling down here. All right, so you guys might be wondering what's going on right now. I bet you guys are really confused. So we have everything set up over here, just a little sneak peek. But we decided we want another SSD for this build. And we were like, you know, where are we going to get one? We don't really want to buy one right now. And even if we could, we'd have to wait for it. So we were like, you know what? We got one right in there inside that mineral oil and we decided let's try to see if we can recycle that and see if we can reuse it in this build so i got volunteered to yeah. uh stick my hand in the mineral oil so let's just let's just go let's go, let's go for it oh yeah you guys like that oh that feels so odd oh. <laughs> your hands are gonna be so soft after this oh, that works and then we have two 750 gig laptop drives um, these should, the reason we chose these is because they're really small and they're, you know, a little more quiet and they don't put off as much heat. And then we have a 200 gig and a 100 gig drive. Um, so we're going to need a lot of SATA and a lot of uh, SATA power cables for that too. And then our, our actual power supply that will power all this is a little Apivia power supply. So this is smaller than your normal everyday power supply and it glows blue, which is really cool. It's not too loud and it has a good amount of connections on it. We did have to modify some stuff though. And, to be able to add more SATA cables because that's what we need a lot of those for all these hard drives. And then pretty much lastly, this is kind of just extra stuff, but lastly we have Windows 7 Home Premium. That's the OS we're going to be using. And if you're wondering why we're using it, don't ask why. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, we're using this because this is going to be kind of like a server, but it's also going to be a computer, so we didn't want to only put a server OS on it. And we'll probably use something like TeamViewer to be able to actually uh, transfer files and all that and manage the server. Got a nice glass panel there. Alright, let's 
Let's easy go. access to the server. All right, then we got all of the trays. See, I think we might use this one. This the problem is like in the second Me. level, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this one goes like in the very bottom. The there's, our, stuff. there's our drip tray. Right, put a mineral oil. And then this one goes like this. I think it's wherever you want it to, really. There's like three, oh, <laughs> like, there's there's like three different levels. Yeah, yeah. So we could have like motherboard or something like that up here or a power supply up there. I don't know. We gotta figure that out. Alright, so we're gonna think about that and we'll be back. Okay, so we basically tore this thing apart. Basically, in reality, to just take all the stuff that was in there for the toaster and just get rid of it. I don't even know where it went. That's the half of it's down here. So yeah, this is pretty much. Yeah, just this a, this was like the the core of the toaster oven. So this is what runs a toaster oven if you yeah. all are interested. Yeah. Which all that crap went right over here. All right, so, so all this is teared apart. We just took everything off. So basically, we have a shell. We don't have to worry about like a toaster and any issues like that. So. Uh, we're gonna put it back together and basically lay some stuff out and I think we're on track to get this close to being done almost because we realized on the side with the black part which is right here there are actually fins already open on the side so we can use this as our exhaust on the sides with the fans and we want it to do much cutting so all right, so we got the motherboard in place. Everything is stripped down. You can see everything back here. It's just the bare buttons. And then we have these nice little, where a fan would actually go. So we're gonna have a fan go like right in this area. This is just a 90 mil. And then to actually hold the motherboard down, we have these holes in here where you would normally screw it down. And we're actually gonna use the rails on here with really small black zip ties. And so that should work really good. Zip ties are somewhat professional, so oh God. It's so professional. And then we're also, for the I.O., we're going to have to cut out a hole right here because we realized we don't want the I.O. facing out here because we want this to be able to work. And then what's really cool is this can slide out and we can change where the motherboard goes. So that's going to be really sick. It'll be like a server that we can change a lot. So let's go ahead and get to that. <laughs> Alright, so I got it cut, um, not the best cut in the world, I didn't even really like measure it or anything, but what you gonna do? Alright, so now we have this bad boy with the power supply in it, and we cut out a little hole in the back where we can turn the switch on and off, which is very difficult, but you can see it works, and we got the cable uh, port, and we have the USB slots, not USB, but the I.O. cut out. Um, and then we're gonna have a spot for the fan down there and the power supply is mounted also it's really solid Matt you want to demonstrate actually got to demonstrate so look at that it's solid it's so, in there so yeah and so is the motherboard so we're making progress now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with all these freaking hard drives okay so here's what we came up with for the hard drives so <laughs> this is not conventional and no we do not suggest doing this but what we did was we have laptop drives here, right? We got an SSD on the very bottom. So we got five, or actually no, we have four laptop drives, and what is the total space of all the drives put together? All the drives put together is 1,920 gigs, so close to two terabytes of storage. Yeah, and we have rubber bands between each one in the front and back to hopefully lower, it will dampen the vibration of, you know, going through each other. And then they're zip tied down to each other, and then on the sides, we have zip ties here to actually hold the drives in place, and I'll show you. It's actually pretty sturdy. So, I mean, you can see I'm moving the whole entire case trying to move these. So each one will connect to this power supply here, and the saddles will go up to the motherboard. So let's go and try to do that. All right, so what I am doing here is our CPU 4 pin cable is actually not long enough to reach. So I cut my own wire, and we're basically just extending it. Um, we're trying that this will work, it should, you see why not, besides the wires being mixed up, which, yeah, sadly that happened. Um, kind of my fault, I didn't mark them before I cut them, and I tried tracing the letters back, but that didn't work too well, and then I also, once I looked closer, I realized, I was like, oh, well, it's probably just a positive and a negative, hopefully, so it shouldn't matter which one goes to which. So now, I'm shrink wrapping them, and tying them together. So as you can see, I got those CPU cables uh, nice and tucked away there. And now Matt's going to go ahead and do a good old demonstration Toasty Bro style. Okay, so, you know, we have to put the CPU into there. So match the little triangle with the triangle on your motherboard. And just... Yeah, you got to lift that lever. Don't forget that bad boy. 
and set it right in. And you don't have to push. If you have to push, there's a problem. Yeah. And then latch, and boom, it's on there. All right, and then of course, don't forget the thermal pasta. So. We're using some, what is it, Arctic Silver 5, I believe? Yeah, this is the good good. It is, it is, it's the really good stuff. So, I prefer just doing the, the dot method. I mean, if you want to do it differently. Dot is straight line, you know, whatever. You, whatever. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to do straight line. I'm going to do a hybrid. I'm going to do a hybrid method. Do, uh, uh, uh. I think that's enough? No. It's like a really small amount there, buddy. Guys, I don't think Matt knows how to PC. I think we're good there. I hope that's enough. All right. We'll find out. Yeah, we will find out. All right, so now Matt's going to go ahead and demonstrate putting the CPU cooler on. Okay, so CPU cooler time. Now, I hate putting got, on yeah, AMD we CPU We have a nice coolers, CPU cooler here. But, you know, we'll make this do. So, what you're going to want to do is make sure it lines up. So, yeah, you got two. You got this one latch on one side, and then the other side has nothing on it. So you got to put the other side on first, which hopefully Matt did. Hopefully Matt didn't do. Yeah, put the other side on the first and then do that side. And then... At least you gotta watch him struggle for a minute here. Durr. Oh god, don't, don't... <laughs> it's on. Alright, now you gotta just do this latch here and you'll feel some pressure as it applies. Nice and good. There you go. Look at that cooler. That is a really... See, that's actually the stock AM3 Plus for the 8350 cooler and it looks really freaking nice. And then go ahead and show you, uh, you know, plug in that CPU uh, pin right there. It's kind of an odd spot off this side over here. I feel like I'm gonna cut my hand again. <laughs> yeah, by the way, the reason Matt has that towel is he's cut his hand like a thousand times. We're good! We yeah. don't have any cuts! Yeah. Alright, and then we gotta do the graphics card. Okay, so graphics card time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be back. Alright, so after some slight modifications, I'm gonna check this out. So we got one rack down now this bad boy fits in there so you can see we were up here and the problem was power your graphics card wouldn't fit but now it'll fit we already measured it and we'll show you guys that in a second okay so we're back now guys and well we got some pretty cool stuff to go on so we got the mats underneath the uh, motherboard so that should work well we haven't actually tested the board yet so that's something we got to do um we actually we had to do a lot of cutting because when we lowered the motherboard, it removed our area to put the I.O. So we had to lower it, make another cut, and then we basically decided this upper portion is probably going to be used for, like, let's say, a fan. We can get that to work well without blocking the I.O. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll figure that out. But well, we, got, we got this one down here, too. We so. have that down there, too. But uh, basically, uh, what we're going to do is after we get the fans on there, um, pretty much just it's it's all go from there. We gotta plug things in with the power supply. The power supply is all good. The drives are still good from the last time we did it. Everything, as far as we know. <laughs> everything should work out fine. So as long as it boots up, we're all good. And we'll put the shield and everything. We should have a finished product and we'll be going to do the software side of this stuff. So hopefully we can get that going today. Okay, so. Moment of truth. Yeah, we have everything in there pretty much. Um, the hard drives are not plugged in and nothing else really is plugged in right now. But we have everything plugged in to be able to power it on and make sure it works. So let's just pray All here, right. guys. So we're gonna go for the classic, uh, just jumping the the jumper here, jumping the jumper. Oh, uh, look at that! Look at let's that! Go. Look let's at go. it! Oh, look at it! Oh. Yes. All right. So it's started up now. We don't know what works fully yet, but this is a big step from what we had before. So yeah. <laughs> we're basically just gonna go back, reroute everything like we had it before when we first started it up, and you saw that it just didn't work, but. We didn't even show that part, did we? Um, no, we did not. It's so, we, you, we, you guys have our word that it did not work. It did not work. So now here's the new board. We're going to work on fans, uh, plugging the stuff in, and then eventually we'll hook a monitor up to it when we decide what we're going to do about software stuff. So, yes. Yeah, we got a fully working glass door here. We got fans. Yeah, we got fans for days. You can't but, look at that cable mess. Right. <laughs> so, so we got two fans here. This one is blowing air out this way. And then this whole thing's gonna have a case over it, so this is gonna be kind of like a wind tunnel. We're gonna have air coming out here and then coming out here. So, it should be a pretty good air flowing system. We got a bunch of ventilation kind of all over the place too, um, with random holes and whatnot, so. Uh, airflow should not be a big issue or overheating or anything, but if it is, then we'll fix it, just like the Toasty Bros does. Okay, so we have this, this monster machine working now. 
All the fans are powered on quite loud, which is actually, I think, the loudest thing is this uh, graphics card. Probably. Uh, supplied by Matt. Yeah. Um, you can see that we got the, we got the lid closed and everything, and then hopefully once we put the, this actual lid over here on, it'll be a little bit quieter. And then you can see we're installing Windows 7 now. So yeah, we did go with Windows 7 just because we really know how to navigate it well, and we know we can just use Team Gear on it pretty easily to be able to remotely access it and everything. And then we have all the drives plugged in. Now the only problem we had though is one of our cables, which I don't feel like getting it out, one of our SATA cables though actually um, well, the awkwardly, power. Yeah, it was the power SATA. We had two CD drives, or DVD drives, which were brand new by the way, and it fried both of them. <laughs> it was a messed up SATA cable. Um, and a fried both of them. Which, the SATA cable had no signs of damage on it, just for some reason, like we saw one of them start smoking and we we're like, okay, yep. And that was the one that was plugged into one of our 750 gig hard drives. So we're down to a 750 gig right now. We don't think it's dead though. We think that the cable itself died um, along with it. So I don't know, we don't know yet, but we'll find out later. But we right now we have a 750, a 200, a 100, and a 120 gig SSD, which is what we're installing Windows 7 on. So we should have, a, we, that's a fair amount of storage. We have about a terabyte, uh, maybe like a terabyte and a half of storage. I don't know if I'm doing that. math right now. So, something around that area though. So we'll have a good amount of storage and you know, we're, I don't think we're gonna be storing too much stuff on it right away. So um, until, you know, everyone sponsors us with those SSD sponsorships, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> All right guys, the Toasty server is done. Check, check that bad boy out. All right, so this is our toasty server. Basically, yeah, it's it's pretty loud. It's kind <laughs> it's, of well, it's not like it's not horrible. It's like I would say it's pretty much like an average, you know, like HP machine or something like that. Like, like it's like an average pre-built is what it sounds like because it is using kind of generic fans. But um, once we get some more, uh, you know, like stuff, maybe sponsorship stuff, we're definitely gonna upgrade this. This this is gonna be a concern for a while because. We'll go ahead and reveal it now because it's going to be in this video, right? We're going to run a Minecraft server on this. A dedicated 24-7 Minecraft server. So yeah, this thing is going to be running a Minecraft server 24-7 for you all to join. It's going to be modded. We'll worry about getting moderators and stuff for it. We'll deal with all that in the future. But this server is running, as you can tell. We are on, on turbo we're on Windows 7. And basically all that's left to do is we'll probably do another dedicated video going over software for it. And we'll do like Team Viewer, all the stuff that we're going to put on there. Um, for storage. We haven't even set up our RAID for the storage drives, which we can do. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do software-wise, but basically as far as hardware goes, the toaster PC is finished. So and we're going to make it glow too, because it's not, well, like, if you look in there, it has a little bit of blue, but not enough. All right. You see the blue in there? It's not quite enough. So I want to personally thank Vidfall for sponsoring this. Mm -hmm. uh, so click the link in the description below to click Vidfall and sign up for their account. Uh, they basically helped promote this video to a bunch of their viewers and it's something and it's a company that we've been working with for a while. So Yeah, we, we like them a lot. And uh, as I said in my update, they also are helping us do some live streaming stuff. So maybe we'll involve this in one of them. Okay, so thank you guys for watching the long anticipated month build it feels like it's been close to a month it's taken to put this together so and before we roll out we're gonna let you guys see a nice little you know pan of this and you know we'll try and let you guys see some of the minecraft server running